afternoon guys. This afternoon we're going to review our Tanami X11 Oztrack camper. We've been living in it for about six months now. So it's about time we do a review on it. We're going to show you everything that's broke, everything we don't like about it. First up guys, I'm going to give you a non-sped up setup time video. This will show you exactly how long it takes to set up our setup behind us here. After that, we're going to do a quick express walk walkthrough video, show you guys the, all the features of the Oztrack, and then we're going to sit down and talk a bit about what we love and what we don't love about the Oztrack. So let's get into it. So let's get straight into the walkthrough, guys. We'll start at the roof and work our way down. So the Oztrack X11 Tanami comes with 300 watts of solar from standard. It also comes with a mushroom antenna, Dometic aircon, and that's about it on the roof. So coming this way. It's got a little skylight too. Which has broke. <laughs> anyway, coming over here, we've got a nice compartment that you can store a generator, or whatever we've chosen to store. An angle is a freezer in there. The tunnel boot up the top that goes all the way through to the other side of the van, and you can access that through the inside cupboards. Coming this way, you've got your toilet cassette, which is removable, obviously. Has wheels, all that jazz. Don't need to talk too much about the toilet. <laughs> Bit of potty talk. Outdoor shower, which we have not used yet, which is pretty much, yeah, unused. She's still a virgin. Also got your 240 volt inlet here, so that's for your mains. 
This is for your radio. Um, crank the tunes with this one. Got your fill up for your ma massive tank out the back. I think the rear tank's 120 liters, so that's got your breather, water mains connection, and obviously your fill up. Gas trimmer um, cover. You take that off when you're operating your gas hot water. This is the fold out section. So this is, I think, is roughly two and a half feet. So it's 11 foot van. It folds out to roughly 13 and a half feet. Also, we threw the solar panel out, testing out the new iTech World 200 watt solar panel. Pretty impressed so far, but we'll get to that in a different video. Huge window out the back, which we're super impressed by. Looking under the van, comes with two recovery points on each side. Also comes with the standard single wheel. I'm pretty sure you can option that up to a, a dual wheel um, if you order directly through Oztrack. Also got the gas bayonet, twin gas bayonet out the back here, so you can actually throw a Weber on the kitchen just there. Coming further around, got the kitchen area. And this is an output for 240 volts, so you can plug your kettle in there. Also you got cigarette output and your USB output. These are for external lighting, which we haven't used also. The kitchen is fully stainless steel. Comes with this fold out section that also dub doubles as a windbreak. Like I said before, you can put your Weber out on that side. Four burner, um, Threadford cooktop. Seems to work pretty good. Took us a while to work that one out. You gotta hold the gas in while you light it. Also got the kitchen here, which is just a, a kitchen and a mess. <laughs> cutlery drawer, not our favorite cutlery drawer. A lot of people option these out for ones with a bit more storage. Just deeper drawers. Yeah, so before I go any further, this is the electric awning. This is super handy. It makes a lot of noise when you're putting it in and out. So make sure you're doing it during the day and not in the morning and pissing your neighbors off. But apart from that, it works a treat. Maybe a bit of CRC or degreaser might lube it up a bit. So, Works really well when we first got it, but now it's just a bit creaky. Yeah, I think that's it's right. from the salt water. And also have a look at this joint that we're in now. This is actually on hip camp. It's called the Eagle's Nest. We're just in Cardinara still. Such a pretty spot. You got the Boab trees, sun setting. It's pretty mint, not a breath of wind. It's been bloody hot today though. And coming around here, I haven't spoken about this, but this top boot here is for the poles. It comes with the external annex. That's all standard. That's not an option. So your poles and stuff come in there. I've just kept fishing rods and stuff. Big boot at the front, which is super handy for just ditching stuff in. We've got the two nine kilo gas bottles, also like snorkels, oil for oil changes, all that jazz. I should mention that the Oztrack X11 Tanamai comes with four stabilizers, even though it's a, four, a small van, we still use these. Quite a long drawbar up the front. We're running the MIG hitch, which is a uniglide coupling join, and it's pretty good. We haven't had much issues with it. It cops a lot of flack from other people, though. Apparently, not as superior as the DO35 or them sort of pieces of equipment. It's also got your handbrake, and it comes with a standard arc jockey wheel. Also, the Oztrack comes out standard of the factory with a seven pin plug and Anderson. You'll need to wire the, the cable run into your alternator to be able to charge the Tanamai. DC to DC from your alternator. And also that didn't come standard when we first got the van six months ago. So another thing that's really handy about the Oztrack is this stone guard. So underneath here is the paint and that's gonna be looking fresh when we take that off. Obviously mounted the Max trucks at the front and how could I forget the tap that's on the drawbar. That's super handy guys for getting the water bottle and filling up big jugs of water. So super impressed with that. And then in this one, we've got our 60 liter companion fridge slides right out this fridge fridge slide actually broke on the gib river road and all it is now it's not locking into position so hopefully an easy fix got some external speakers here too guys and that is your front tank fill up right there which is only a 50 liter tank it also comes standard with a 90 liter gray water tank that a lot of people convert to a freshwater tank purely because not many places you actually need a gray water tank so uh, what else can I talk about? Bar counter. Bar counter. So we won't open this now, guys, because it's an absolute pigsty in there, but pretty much we have all our coffee making stuff. It's about that deep. Actually, I'll, I'll open it for you. It, I've unlocked it. <laughs> so, it's not that bad. No, nah, it's pretty organized, actually. So we keep our jet boiler for morning coffees, also spices and herbs for cooking, make it nice and yummy. Also got our detergent, sauces, whatever. Also comes with a TV output there and also charging points inside there. This thing is super handy. Um, we use this a lot as a preparing bench too. So 
prepare your food there, cook it there, works really nicely. So now it's got an electric step, but the electric steps become a little bit dicky over the Gibb River Road too. I think it just needs some uh, degreaser. We're also running the muck mat guys. These things are awesome. I don't know how many times I have to say it. On and off camera, I, I say it every day. These things are so comfortable. Nothing quite like it. I'll give it to Sarah now. She'll walk you through the inside of the van. On the left hand side here, we've got some storage cupboards. The top two are storage, the bottom two go through to the tunnel boot. Got more storage on the side, storage here, storage here. Inside here is the ensuite with a toilet, shower, and sink. And then we've got our king size bed with more storage on the sides as well. So for an 11 foot van, there's heaps of storage. The van also came standard with a Dometic aircon, so we need to be plugged into 240 to run the aircon, but I believe that you can rewire it so that you can run it off your batteries, but we decided that we wouldn't do that. We've got the skylight, like we spoke about. The hatch is actually broken off, so we're getting that replaced when we go home. Um, and then the windows, they're just your standard push out. <laughs> it always does this. Lock. Flywire, solar screens. To the right here, we've got a little TV. To be honest, we don't really use it that much. Underneath the bed, we've got our two iTech World 120X batteries, lithium. We've also got the hot water system and all of the electrics and stuff. And then to the very right hand side, there's a little compartment that's big enough to fit Kellen's tools. Down here is all the electric, so opens up. You've got your front tank, rear tank, grey water, 12 volt power on, the fridge on, lights on, plugs, pump, your voltage, and then what your batteries are sitting at. Here we've got USB plugs, 12 volt, awning to open and close, and then the electric step to open and close, and then all of your light switches, Truma, hot water system, the inverter, so you just hold it for a second, and then it's on and then you've got your bluetooth radio one thing on this system guys if you do want to rely off this voltmeter i uh, definitely suggest don't go into lithium because it does become really an inaccurate and also this doesn't give an accurate representation of where your batteries are actually at i'd just sort of like to put that as an aside note also the truma hot water system you can either select 60 or 70 degrees whatever you want we always run 60 because 70 is bloody hot it'll burn you burns you yeah, yeah. So pretty much apart from that, that's the whole van done. Uh, like we said before, it's an 11 foot van and I know we have done a walkthrough before, but I thought we'd do another one just because we have been talking on camera a little bit more than what we had when we first started. And yeah, the first video was, uh, wasn't the best audio and whatnot. So there's your quick walk around guys. Well, and, and the van's actually been lived in now and it's actually done tracks and stuff. So six months of full-time living so you actually yep. see it for what it would look like if you guys were to buy a van and live in it yeah so let's get into what we like and what we don't like all that formal stuff out of the way it's probably time to talk about what we like about the van what we don't like about the van uh some of the behind the scenes so what oz trucks like to deal with and also the price point compared to other other vans in its same class so firstly i'll throw it to sarah so what do you like best about the tanami x11 my favourite thing about the van would be the ensuite, so it's got a shower and toilet. Being able to just go to the toilet in the van at night time, not have to walk out to a caravan but caravan park toilet or like go behind a tree when you're bush camping. It just makes it so much more comfortable. And being able to shower at the end of the day, like if we're beach camping, it's so nice to be able to come home, have a shower and feel fresh when you go to bed. Yeah, for sure. And as being a, a bloke, it's, you know, you can say all day, oh, no, nah, that's, you know, that's for girls and all that stuff, but it's so nice, you know, coming home and um, you feel like a bit of a pansy when you say it. Like, I like the creature comforts as well as Sarah, so having a shower after the beach and stuff is so good. So just little things like that, having the caravan and, like, your own little bubble. Even on rainy days, you can isolate yourself in the van away from the rest of the world, you know, like you can really go off-grid sort of thing quite literally, so... That sort of aspect of having the van's been really nice in comparison to like a rooftop tent or a swag or something. What would be the thing that you would change about the van if you could? I uh, wish we got a dust proof. Du du dust suppression fan. 
dust suppression fan before we did the Gib River Road. So when you do like a little bit of gravel, it's fine. You don't get any dust in the van, but after doing the Gib, 550Ks of, da of dust and gravel roads, it was so bad. It did come in through the side where it um, folds out and you, it just goes on the side next to the bed on those little storage compartments. So if we would do it again, we get one of those dust fan things and hopefully that would solve that issue because that really is the only issue at the moment. Yeah, and I'd second that. The dust issue mm -hmm. is probably the worst thing that we definitely, it was definitely an oversight on our behalf. Mm -hmm. We didn't... Everyone well, we, told us to get one. We're like, nah, we'll be right. <laughs> we just, to be honest, we just didn't do that hard of tracks to start with and then we hit the gib and obviously did a few tracks like that and it became a real issue. But when I say dust suppression fan, it also mean like positive air pressure fan to keep the dust out. People like to refer to it as different uh, words. But, yeah, no, nah, that's probably our biggest regret of the trip is not having one of those things. I mean, it hasn't ruined our trip. It's just annoying having to um, wipe down benches and stuff when you get somewhere along the gib. Yeah, and just having all your stuff nice and clean and then you open the door and it's just covered in dust, which isn't ideal. And I think that a lot of the hybrids are also in the same sort of bracket where they have them folding out parts components and trying to seal a hinge that's got to be a moving part is almost mm. like a nightmare so it doesn't get into like your clothes and stuff in the drawers it's literally just the open space that gets a bit of dust yeah so bench tops the top mm. of the mattress and stuff like that which isn't ideal for sleeping on we always wake up with headaches after we do really dusty roads and stuff and it was really bad on the gib we did 1500 k's on the gib in total so you could imagine how much bull dust got into the van. I actually cleaned some of it out this morning and it was atrocious. It all turned to mud and stuff due to the moisture and condensation. So yeah, that's something that we'd change and do differently next time. And I think that a lot of people should take that advice. It's good advice to get, if you get in a hybrid or if you get in an Oztrack in particular, bloody get a dust suppression fan, positive air pressure fan on the roof. Mm. It'll uh, make your life a lot easier, especially if you're trying to live in it. So let's talk price. So. This van cost us 38,000. We bought it when it was on special last year and we bought the 2021 model. Obviously, it got picked it up this year. I feel that for that price, $38,000, it is a great buy it's because amazing. you you tell me another van, whether it be its direct competitors, MDC, Easy Trail, uh, all them brands, you show me one that has the same specs for the same price. I bet you can't find one. So I think that Oz Track is the cheapest around for what it is. Like all the extras like aircon and those sort of things, it's all included in that price. They don't charge you extra to chuck an aircon on or something like the other companies. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> yeah, that is correct. A lot of a lot of added options that are standard with this van. So yeah, you go to MDC, I think they charge you for an aircon and they charge you for this and that. So they all come standard with the Oztrack, which is a good thing for that company too, you know. And it takes the stress out of things. You don't have to worry about the money. It's just that flat rate price. You can option it up with a uh, Lovell suspension upgrade. Also, you get the DO35 hitch, stuff like that. We didn't opt for that. We just went full El Dente, full standard, and we have had no issues at all, even though people have given those tracks some pretty nasty reviews on how they tow with the standard wheel bearings, tyres, and the weight distribution. So one other thing I'll touch on is that our fuel economy with this van. So... The van itself is 11 foot, however, it is a very heavy van. It weighs two and a half ton fully loaded. That's what we weigh in it. And I get 16 to 17 liters per 100 kilometers if it's flat ground and no wind. Throw a bit of headwind into the mix. You know, you go up a couple of liters, you guys know how it works. But um, we thought that was pretty good. We give that the pop top, comes down, you get, get a bit less wind drag, which is really good. The fold out bit, like we've touched on before, you get a bit of dust in, but it also makes your van a lot bigger space. So it's everything's a compromise when it comes to touring guys. It's it's really comes down to that. How would you rate Oztrack as a company to sort of deal with and throw like we've we're a young couple and we this is a lot of money for us. Um, it might not be a lot of money for a lot of other people, but thirty eight grand for us is a fair bit of coin, so how would you rate them for that? Um, like we said in our original walk around video. Before, like we, before we bought the van, they were really easy to deal with, back and forth emails to get the van. They changed the shipping from Queensland to South Australia, no issues at all. It was really smooth with the whole handing over the van. Once we had the van and we had some issues that we needed to get fixed, it was a bit harder and they were a little bit harder to deal with. 
since then it's sort of changed a bit they are a little bit easier to deal with now and when we send an email we get a reply within a few days so our stance then has changed because they're better now they have become better but i also think that <laughs> they partly might have seen our other video but if you, yeah we're not sure if because we gave them a, a hard flack on the old youtube and instagram and whatnot they've you know changed their tune to us and we're not sure if that's something that is transparent across all their customers if everyone gets that sort of treatment but for us, yeah, it's it's been it was pretty dismal at the start, but it has it has had an upward trend, which is very positive for us. Um, the worst thing is like for us, we're only um, 26, 25, so for us, putting forty thousand dollars down on a van was a huge investment, like yeah. huge. So once we had the van, and then we we're having those issues, we we're just like, oh my god, what have we done? Like maybe mm. we should have gone with a different company. Like it's always going to be like this. So yeah. Yeah, we're glad that their tune has changed because they're a lot easier to deal with now. So we should touch on some of the things that have broken on the van. So like I said before, we haven't taken the van down many, like, well actually, we've taken the van down a few full drive tracks and that it has handled very well, but all the issues that we have had have come from gazetted roads such as the Gibb River Road. So before the Gibb, nothing really broke apart from the skylight hatch. They just applied too much silicon to the actual hinges themselves and that incurred the, the hatch to break straight off and we've just sort of dicky fixed it down so no water can get in but but because that was their fault like it's all covered under warranty and they're setting a new hatch and it's going to get fixed which they're really good about too like also the antenna has broke on the gib as well just them co constant corrugations has just worn it down and it's just snapped off that mushroom antenna like i touched on earlier the fridge slide has broken as well and the door, so the door handle lock is very dicky, so. Mm, I think it's just from rattling around and stuff, I yep. don't know. But be careful, because I'm pretty sure that's a standard issue oh, across all the hybrids, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So there's a few things that we're frustrated about. Getting on to some of the last points that we sort of want to discuss for you guys, given that we've lived in it for six months, what do you think moving forward? What do you think we need? What's our um, evolution of vans? What are we needing now that we didn't need before essentially the grass is always greener on the other side and for us the only issue that we've been having with the van is just space because we are making youtube videos and we're doing blogs and instagram like there is times where we have to sit in the van and work and it would just be so nice for us to have a seating area where we can sit and work and have a comfortable space because at the moment we're sitting on the bed which isn't bad, like we're making do and we're happy with what we've got. It's comfy but in a spring it's mattress. It's just <laughs> the, the back issue, like you're sitting like this trying to work and you just get a sore back. So it sounds like the most minor issue ever, but. And there's people out there stuck in COVID yeah. and all this sort of stuff, but. You know. like, it's just what we want. Like it's not a need, it's definitely a want. And the other one would be an in, like a small indoor kitchen because we cook outside all the time and. 99% of the time it's fine but there's been that 1% of the time where I've just like looked inside and I'm like oh my god I'd love to just be able to whip up some food inside because it's either been heaps of mozzies or it's been windy, windy or rain, yeah. thunderstorms, all sorts of stuff. But like dingoes, the whole, yeah, bloody the whole dingoes. six months that's been twice so really yep. it's not something that I need it's a want but I mean if we're talking about what we want to move into. <laughs> yeah yeah so for me personally, I second what Sarah said, the seating arrangement, that'd be so nice to be able to sit down with a backrest and do your work and stuff. Also, the the solar, I wish we had more solar. So with the reason we are going to iTech and running their solar panels, flexible blankets, is because we don't have enough solar on the roof. And the solar that we do have on the roof are these slimline panels. And the, the defect with that panel is that when it gets hot, its efficiency goes way down. So I find that straight away you're getting really good input, but as that panel gets hotter in the Kimberley sun, for instance, today it was 40 degrees, the efficiency goes down. So when I'm plugging in them high quality fl flexible solar blankets, it boosts it right up. But in an ideal world, you wouldn't need them. You'd, you'd have enough solar on your roof to bloody last year. Once again, Sarah's oh. touched on a good point with the indoor kitchen. I'd love to be able to just wake up in the morning and make a coffee inside mm. the van. Given that some mornings, depending on where you are, if you're in the desert, it's freaking cold. It's like one degree. 
but if you're near the coast, it could be howling onshore. Like situations like that, I'd love to have an indoor area where I can make a coffee in the morning and not worry about going outside. Sounds really, uh, oh, how would you put it? Soft. I sound like I'm wearing a skirt right now. I know I'd, I drive a Prado, but <laughs> sometimes you just want to, you know, wear the skirt and be inside for a little while. So. And an upright fridge. Everyone we've run into while traveling or met, in their back of their canopies and stuff, they've got like the little upright fridges and they look so good. Even just for stacking, like, don't get me wrong, companion fr fridge is sick and it's done well, but stacking wise, it'd be so good to just be able to open the fridge, pull it out and yeah. like not have to restack the whole fridge. It's but, just the little things, eh? Yeah. So Bushman's, if you're watching this, Bushman's <laughs> fridges, hit us up, mate. We'll, we'd love to run your fridges. I'm, I doubt he's watching. No one watches anyway, but um, yeah, that's just another small thing that can make a massive difference. So yeah, that's that's pretty much our van summary. Like like we said before, we're quite happy with, if you guys saw some of the roads we take this thing and some of the tracks we take it down, you guys would be quite impressed with how it's actually held up. And being what? 11 foot pretty much goes anywhere. Like places where it's yeah. just people with rooftop tents, we're there. Yeah, so. and, they, and we've had sometimes oldies come up to us, say like, how did you get that in there? Like when we were at the back of Millstream National Park we had people thinking like we've never seen a caravan on this road and we've lived here for 30 years you know like <laughs> so you got to give it credit where credit's due it is a good little van and I do recommend it to people like us that are getting into an entry level sort of van it is a very good first van and we have had a great time great memories in this thing and we give it a good rap especially because of the price point you know yeah. but there's a few things that make us, me and Sarah, want an Australian made van. Just the small things like what we've talked about, like the dicky door and the antenna snapping, things like the hatch snapping, things like that. You wouldn't get with the sort of higher quality, um, but you're obviously in a different price bracket then. So yeah, we are very different to our price points. Yeah, we are very, very keen to see what the future holds and yeah, we've had a great time in this van. It's it's done a lap of WA, so got to give it credit. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. You bloody legends. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching, legends. The camera just cut out. That's why we're back on the iPhone quality. Sorry about that. But yeah, no, it's been a good day, and we uh, hope you guys got something out of this. If you're looking at buying a hybrid, or you just wanted a bit of a look through of what we do and our setup, and what we think about it, so. If you guys do want to use the iTech World Code at SKT10, it gets you 10% off. And also, if you want to become a Patreon, uh, the link will be in the description. Also, thanks to all our Patreons. Without you guys, this wouldn't happen. So, big ups to you guys. And a special shout out to Christopher. We forgot to put you in the thank you messages on the last video. <laughs> and yeah, we, we do appreciate you, mate. So, cheers, legend. Thanks for sticking with us. So, see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed this one. Yo.